Welcome back to the channel everyone. Something a little bit different for you today, we are off in our camper van Woody and we're heading down to Cornwall and our favourite place to go, Newquay. For the first time in a little while, Tilly will be coming with us. Um, going to come in, it'll be nice and dark when I get here, but we are just packing up the camper van now, getting ready to go. It's a bit of a long way, so it's Thursday evening, I'm just back from work, still in my work clothes, but we're going to head down pitch up somewhere overnight we're going to show you a brand new campsite we've never been to before some of our favorite beaches places we like to go places we like to eat and a few new places as well that we're going to try and discover with you so pack up your bucket and spade uh, maybe a cozy but it might be a bit cold and we'll see you there After a long drive Thursday night, we stopped over on a quiet lane outside of Colliford Lake. We stopped around 1.30 in the morning or so and headed off again around 6am. Early Friday morning, we headed over to Newquay, managing to get a spot on Esplanade Road. Tooth, where are we? Where are we? Don't fall, Tilly, don't fall. Over the years, Bristol Beach has risen to prominence as the epicentre of British surfing, with its golden sands, huge Atlantic swells and ever-present crashing waves. Its stunning beauty is further underscored by towering cliffs, undulating sand dunes and dramatic headlands. Bristol has also become renowned for its unique events that run throughout the year, from late night surf events to the most famous Boardmasters Surf, Skate and Music Festival that we attended last year. There is a complex full of shops and restaurants and it is always the best place to watch the sunset. More importantly right now, you can see how happy it makes Tilly. This dog loves the sea so it's always lovely to come down here whenever we can and bring her down. It's great when you get to see the beaches nice and early and you kind of feel like you've got the place to yourself because this place gets pretty busy during the day. One thing I always love to harp on about when we visit Vistral is the Headlands Hotel on the cliffs above, and more importantly, how it was the main filming location for the original Witches film. This film scared the bejesus out of me as a kid, and what's more horrifying is that I've recently discovered that AD still hasn't actually seen it. Someone's got to call Childline, because that's definitely 90s child abuse right there. I don't think AD actually considers this to be that dramatic, so please leave a comment below if you are also horrified by the fact that he has never seen the classic The Witches. Because we got here so early, I managed to park up on Esplanade Road, which is free parking all day. We finally managed to visit Sea Spray Cafe, located right into the cliffs. This cafe is gorgeous and we had the most incredible breakfast and coffee.
The staff were really lovely and didn't judge me for having one of their cruffins for breakfast. It was absolutely lush. You can't beat the views either. This definitely makes it onto the list of places to come back to. While Tilly had a much needed nap, we headed off into town for our first mooch around. Picking up a quick coffee from Milk, we then wandered through the town coming across the old tram track. The tram track follows the line of an old horse-drawn tramway. It was built in 1849 to carry ore from East Wheel Rose Mine to Newquay Harbour. It ran from Trenounce Viaduct to 4th Street, continuing to the harbour by tunnel. This route brought us out towards Killer Court Retail Quarter, where there are loads of fantastic local independent retailers, which I always love to look around. You can then head down to Toe and Beach from here, but for us it was time to head back to the van and get checked into the campsite. We're going to show you more of the campsite later, as it was a bit grotty and we literally got there, unpacked the awning, got the place all sorted and then headed straight back out to the pub. No trip to Nuki for us would be complete without a visit to the Sink Inn. It always has the best atmosphere and fantastic local craft beers and drinks. Although craft beers are more 80s thing, I always like to have a little cheeky half and I would never attempt to keep up with him. They have brilliant music and DJ nights, so it's another one really worth a visit. We finished off the night by picking up a herd burger and taking it back to the van. These gourmet burgers are utterly epic and recently shortlisted as finalists for the National Burger Awards. how well you'll hear me because this is testing out a new camera but this morning <laughs> I'm currently getting flooded at Towan Bay so we've come to walk the dog first thing she loves the sea up until the point it reaches her bum hole then she's had enough but Towan is a really beautiful beach in Newquay you can see you've got a little island there with the house on the top <laughs> and you get a really lovely sandy beach um, that you can obviously bring your dogs. There is a group of women uh, while swimming just behind me and they are having the best time. They, <laughs> all you can hear is them just screaming and uh, having a really lovely time and I'm quite jealous. Um, but yes, Tilly has had her walk. She loves the beach. Um, so I think it's time for some pastries pretty soon. Um, definitely a coffee. Uh, but yeah, the one problem we have with Nuki, and it's our own fault, is that we never check to see when the tides are in and out. So when we got to Tone this morning, as you can see, it was already near enough in. Um, but it's quite nice. I've got my wellies on. I only went over a little bit. aidy has got his trains on. Got very wet. <laughs> so it's definitely time for a coffee. So at the moment, obviously, the tide is in. But when the tide is out, this becomes a massive beach. So it's three different bays that all join together as the tide goes out. So behind me is the little house on a separate hill. Um, Tilsa's very angry, she really wants her pastries. Um, <laughs> I don't know whether you can see it very well from this angle, yeah. Um, so, yes, when the tide goes out, then you have a 
huge bay, or beach I should say, as the three all join together. Um, but we really like Terran. I don't know why, it's a quite a small little um, bay, beach. And we've done sea kayaking from here before. Um, and we've done some coast steering and stuff around the bay. Um, but yeah, it's just really nice. from Pavilion. They make the best pastries in town, they really do. I'm pretty sure they deliver to just about everywhere. Um, I normally have something called monkey bread, which I kind of have a bit of an obsession with, but it's it's fundamentally this. It's a cinnamon roll kind of thing. And then this is Aidy's. This is an almond pan au chocolat. Look at the size of them. Yeah, they're not small. They're not something you should do every day. Um, and then we've got some flat whites from there. Again, they've got really nice coffee. They don't have maybe the selection of other places, but it's still good coffee. And Tills has water in a tube, but shockingly enough, that's not cutting it for her this morning. <laughs> so she's gonna want a lot of crumbs. <laughs> Can you see her? She wants the pastry. She does enjoy a bit of pastry and a bit of coffee. Anyway, should we give it a go? Is very sad. <laughs> mm. I think they always do normally like excuse me, um, big egg glaze on a lot of their pastries. This one not so much, um, but if you sort of look at 80s, it's got so many layers. I'm gonna try and I'm holding this in the weirdest way ever. Um, but they're like really, that's too close, <laughs> really crunchy um, and it's like yeah a really big egg wash over them I think so they always make really crispy pastries um, which is just delicious um, I think it's pretty much where just everyone goes in the morning for a coffee and pastry it's always busy as soon as they open so they open now from eight o'clock it used to be a bit earlier so we were sad when we got here at like half past seven <laughs> um, but yeah well worth it after a dog walk Tilly is enjoying some as we speak. <laughs> I need crummies for the dog. Oh. And some baby starlings. Hey. You are very young and little and cute. the view. Oh, it's a bit shit. <laughs> you do a YouTube friendly version. <laughs> what do you think to the view? It's getting a scooch on the foggy side but it is lovely. We always seem to sit here eating pastry and it's the only time we ever consider <laughs> taking up bowls. You're not going to take it up? I've never really understood bowls. Um, you know, I got as far as like going to rock and bowl, playing like, temp and bowling. And even then I had the bumps on. Lovely view. There's fruit to be had till it will find it. Don't cough like, at me. Do you like cinnamon dog? Why are you looking with your wise eyes? <laughs> Give it to me. Mm -hmm. Sit down. Sit. Oh, that's the opposite. Sit. Sit down. Good girl. Pull. <laughs> Pastries were had. 
they were good. <laughs> Aidy could eat another, it's probably not advised. Um, Tills is on her second shoe, so it's probably time to take her home for a nap pretty soon. Um, but yeah, we're just going to enjoy our coffee. So I think I said we had flat whites from there, um, and they're normally pretty good. Um, Aidy has to hear my cup rant on a regular basis. Um, I really like them here because they're a really nice eco cup, so everything is compostable. Um, yeah, Tilly, everything's compostable. Um, and I don't know why, but loads of places here still use black lids, um, which aren't recyclable, which aren't biodegradable, like black plastic is just the pit. Um, and uh, I don't know why, but it always it always gripes me a little bit. Um, so yeah, a few places to go to. What I really should do is be incredibly responsible and remember to bring my own cup, um, which <laughs> I don't always do. We normally make our own coffees quite often. But yeah, things like this, I just think are really important. Tilly doesn't really care as much because she's just sad all the pastry's gone, so. Um, so am I. <laughs> so to me. So it's coffee time, back to the campsite with the dog and uh, yeah, she'll have a nap, I might have a nap too, see how the day goes. She's trying to get on, she's just desperate to go, for the love of God, have your coffee, shut up <laughs> and take me home. <laughs> He wants some, some toys. Nice. They were good. They used to drive my parents like mental. Yes, please. <laughs> Get in my basket. There you go. We've, now we've got something like that already in the van from when we played. Where's the cock? Tennis. <laughs> no cock included. No cock. No. Why don't you get yourself a boogie board? Look, you could add to our collection. The dog would like this. In his element, isn't he? <laughs> Do you actually want these? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Hours. <laughs> Hours. <laughs> oh, I wondered why I was so close to you. I had to zoom on. Do you get tickets? Is that what you want to know? <sighs> Aidy's dream is to get as many tickets as he can. <gasps> Aidy, look! <gasps> oh. <gasps> two tickets. <laughs> what do you think you can get for two tickets? These were my favourite as a kid. Like, and I was convinced that I knew ways to like win something. I could, yeah. I could beat the system. <laughs> I don't know what this is, but he's very happy. Can you beat uh, And as it's a bit soggy, it's a good time to come back, kind of enjoy the van. The dog's having, hopefully, a nap. And um, I brought my nice uh, mocha pot with me. So it's time to be able to actually sort of slow down and make a really nice coffee in the morning. So it's gonna be quite noisy as I do this. But the quite nice thing about the van is I feel like now we've had it for quite a few years, everything, for a start it has its place but we have everything in the van we kind of need so when we first got it we would constantly be taking stuff from the house and then having to move it in here so like pots and pans and things like that but now like every drawer fits really neatly like all our little cutlery is in here and all our knives and forks and our plates and bowls and stuff so it's quite nice just to yeah make make everything nice and neat very different from our actual house where nothing, the dishwasher never gets nothing empty, happens. Honest, so. <laughs> we just get stuff out of the dishwasher. <laughs> yeah, we can't be the only people that live that way. <laughs> you fill it, you clean it, you take stuff out. <laughs> the drawers remain empty. So if you've watched any of our videos from Bergamo in Italy recently, um, the apartment that we stay in has one of these mocha pots 
and we kind of got a bit obsessed with them each time so I finally got some of them um, and then even the coffee that we have um, is one that you can buy in the UK but it's from kind of in the same region and um, it's just really nice it's quite a Where is it from? So Cafe di Como. Oh, this is probably Lake Como. Lake Como area. But it's quite a sweet coffee, which I like. It's kind of got a bit of a chocolatey yeah, vibe to it. I have no idea how to use this thing still. Yeah, that's why I'm always summoned to make the coffee. It's like a little magic trick. <laughs> that's why for the first time you actually openly volunteered to go and wash up this morning. <laughs> I think it was on the guys that I make the coffee at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Did you? Did you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, so you top up with water if you've not seen them before. There's a filter that sits on top and then you just put your coffee quite loosely in it. So you don't kind of pack it like you do other coffees. Screw the top on. I'm sure I'm meant to be showing you this better, but it makes me feel like I'm in Blue Peter. Dogs. They look like guinea pigs. That's more. <laughs> I might have to try and record one of them. They're throwing a ball for this dog. It's like a little, do they call them a teacup Yorkie? Something like that, just to the left from that massive motorhome. They've got two little dogs. Look at it run. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I do think sometimes the ease you <coughs> must get from having a little dog compared to having a big chonky dog. Because um, we're in a medium wheelbase and you know, Tilly sort of just fit going around and about, but she's a big, she's like all of us, she's a scooch chunky. Um, so I'm kind of jealous sometimes when people have these little dogs that can just sit in the middle seat and like sleep on one cushion. Tills takes up more room than I do half the time. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to get the famous Cornish Malcolm Barnicut Cornish pasties. Got to be done. That AD says he was recommended by an actual Cornish person. Yeah, an actual person. Cornish person who I met through work. Tell me about them. <laughs> yeah. That's so I had to try it. Some chonky stuff. So you've got. Uh, so I've got steak. Steak. And I've obviously got a veggie one, so cheese and cheese and onion, I think. Um, we have come down to Porth Beach, um, which is a really beautiful little beach. Managed to park up, so we're going to quaff this and then probably let the dog get on the beach. I would have thought. God, that's really that good. <laughs> we were saying earlier on, Aidy must have then been thinking about it that we very rarely actually go for pasties when we're in Cornwall. I don't know why. Um, Obviously they're like a very traditional food. The idea is that the crimp around the edges is what people <laughs> what people would have held on to when they ate the inside. I think you traditionally used to have a sweet and savoury part to it. Um, the idea was for the workers who would have their you know, like grubby hands from working so they could hold on to the crimp edge and then quaff the rest. It's like a lunch box <coughs> made of pastry, which sounds yeah. awesome. <laughs> Just put your feet in the Eating that bit though. Yeah. I still will, but it puts you off not knowing it was just made for, for dirty hands. For dirty hands. You're, you're, you know, I was going to say you're quite mucky, you're not. I'm the grubby one, you're normally quite clean. So. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> quite neat and tidy. <laughs> right, that's enough talking for me because now I, I can't eat it while I'm holding this and I want to know. Ooh. Oh, yours, of course. All right. Show us the cheese and onion one. So this, is... one but... <laughs> this is your cheese and onion one. I got a small for that. In my tiny hands is enough, I would say. Okay. What's inside? 
inside is cheese and onion. Yeah, mate, we'll do that later. Can we show you so close you could try it? <laughs> Give me the bit that the dirty hands holding on. I've got my grubby hands right now. There we are. <laughs> Thoughts? I think I'll stick with the steak. Really? in the car and we are at Perrinporth um, which is I would say probably one of the most popular beaches you reckon Aidy? It's massive. Um, <laughs> there is a beach bar which I'm going to turn around and show somewhere over there uh, which is really popular. because she's just obsessed with the beach so it's really nice here yeah, to <laughs> be able to take her while we can not living near a coastline and all that So it's time for a staple of any trip to Nuki, which is sitting in your car, eating chips and looking at Fistral Beach. <laughs> I think I think you kind of have to do it as um, just a requirement on entry. Um, so we've just picked up our chips from... Truscuts. Truscuts. I don't know why I can't remember the name. We but again, all the time. We, we literally go That's there. I can't remember the name. I don't remember the name of anything. Um, but yes, that is typically where we get our chips from. Uh, and then it's... Yeah, it's really reasonably priced and then it's only a few minutes drive to here um, Fistral car park changes its rules all the time about how much it costs if there's a height barrier um, so it's probably worth looking online I would say just because we've been kind of caught out before and even now we thought that it was free parking after 6 and now it's 6 30 so it's very easy to get caught out but it is out of season at the minute as well so the barriers are open but a couple of weeks when it's Easter it's probably going to be really restrictive in terms yeah. of vehicle heights and stuff that's why we're in a car instead of a van yeah <laughs> yeah so um yes I haven't explained that at all um <laughs> we do a very strange thing when we come to Nuki which is often to bring the van and also Aidy's car um a lot of that's to do with the dog because she's 
bit of a pain in the bum, um, but it's also about all the height barriers around Newquay. So loads of the car parks that we use um, have height barriers now. And because our van is quite tall, it just really restricts you. So they've done lots of changes over the last couple of years. So it just makes it a bit tricky. So we kind of run around in the day in the van, in the van, in the car, and then we have the van all ready at the campsite. to mention about Fistral is that it's also really good for sunsets um, but not so much tonight so sometimes you just luck out um, and we've had some really lovely sunsets here but tonight I don't think it's gonna be one of those nights what about um, I can offer you a nice vintage bonio yes okay okay oh yes she's like mm, yes that leaves more crumbs here on the sofa for you so uh, yeah sure What are you getting? Disgusting rattler for me. What flavour is that? Um, the flavours that you're meant to have on your 16. Strawberry and lime. And for the syrup, we have... Um, I can't actually read any of that. Skinner's Porth Levelin. Porth Levelin? Sure, that too. You know, it's a place. I eat, yeah, but I pronounce everything wrong. You know, I'm not particularly good with few words. Mm. Mine tastes like something you're meant to drink in a park when you're like 16, 17. And that's like my peak <laughs> drinking vibe. I want something that's basically alcohol pops and Rattler do me well. Very <laughs> alcoholic though, I think normally. Yes, it's quite strong. Mm. 4.8. It's nice though. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'm on four. And I'm a lightweight, so yeah. Meanwhile. Anyway. Uh, I did mention there'd be a lot of crumbs. Um, yeah. Just chewing away. Tills is working on an ASMR game. It's quite strong. So a few drinkies, you'll probably fall asleep holding them. <coughs> yes, you will. And then I will show you how we set up for a film in bed. So this is our nighttime setup. We have little lights either side. And I popped this shelf up a little while ago, it's really lightweight um, and it's perfect because you can just unhinge it and pop it off when you're travelling. Um, but yeah, when we're too lazy to get the projector out, and then this is just a little cover over the window, um, then we clamber up here, <laughs> get cosy, and I just have my little tablet up on the top, but it works quite well when you've got all the lights off. Um, and yeah, just if you can't quite bother to do the full setup, we get nice and cosy in bed. And this is meant to be a double bed. I would say it's a small double. <laughs> it just about has room for the two of us. We hope you've enjoyed our first few days in Newquay. In the next video, we'll be doing a tour of Newquay, showing you more of our campsite and visiting more of our favourite places and beaches in Newquay. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. Bye!